Welcome to episode two of the Soul Munchie podcast. I am so honored and thrilled that you're here tuning in for another episode. In today's episode, we're going to talk about my spiritual enlightenment journey. This journey has been an insane, life-changing ride. I feel like I am a completely different person. The person that I was before my spiritual enlightenment, I she's such she's just so different from who I am right now. And I'm really, really grateful that I went through my journey and I'm still going through my journey. I'm still learning about all of these new things in faith and spirituality. I've evolved to a 2.0 version for myself and someone that is just a better person, a better human, and the better version of who I am. And I'm really, really grateful that I got to experience that at the age of 27. So we'll get through that. We'll get through all of that. Okay. But first, let's start off with munchie of the day. Today, I had a gummy. I had it around, let's see, I had it at 2.45 and it started hitting pretty quick like started hitting 30 minutes later very light and then i think i had the full effect at like 4 p.m and yeah right now it's i'm definitely feeling it i only took one gummy which is only five milligrams i didn't want something that would get me too out of spacey because i do want to be very cautious and intentional and i want to be very present filming this podcast especially with what i'm going to talk about with my whole evolution and my spiritual journey i love 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 the gummies they're so transportable very easy to carry and have on they taste very light simple it's not overly sugary at all it's something quick that you could just pop in and i like how it's very very controlled i know that one gummy is five milligrams depending on like the mood that i want to be in sometimes if i you know really want to get just focused and zoned in and into whatever I'm doing, no distractions. Sometimes I'll pop two gummies and then I could get into a flow of listening to a podcast and baking my goodies. Or sometimes I just need to chill, be relaxed, um, not be so uptight and anxious in this regular human world i'll just pop one gummy and it just tones down a lot of the anticipated stress or anxiety that i normally get also i'm just i'm way more chill way more grateful and i'm way more open to allowing the universe to talk to me so that's munchie of the day there is fire trucks going on outside right now i hope you guys can't hear it but if you guys do then that's regular new york life for you also guys look i'm real Everything that I'm doing right now, it's all a learning process. This is so completely new to me. How to film a podcast, never ever done it before. I'm doing it and each time that I do do it, I'm learning more and more. So like, I think I got the mic structure properly because in the previous episode the mic was too close to my face and i felt like i don't know i just feel like you guys could hear better when it's a little bit lower all right moving on i want to do this segment too just to share with you guys the three highlights of the last time i talked to you from episode one so i guess we'll kind of get started but like this has really changed me this book the five minute journal such a simple but life-changing book you really become more reflective and more grateful when you use this book so you write in this book for five minutes in the morning at nighttime super quick not huge commitment and you start off the morning with writing three things that you're grateful for and then at nighttime you write three things that were your highlights of the day so i want to talk to you guys like share with me what are your highlights of the day or of the month i'll share with you guys the three highlights since i've spoken to you okay the first highlight is i booked thailand tickets for me and my family what what i'm going to thailand in december um for those who know me I love Thailand. I feel like in my past life, I definitely lived in Thailand. I just, I love the culture, love the people, love the food. I feel like I'm home when I'm in Thailand and everything is so affordable. The food is extremely cheap. You could get like a really good breakfast meal just for $3. So like you'll get soup, noodles, and some kind of other appetizer for $3. Love getting massages there. 
It's such a beautiful country. This is going to be my third time going to Thailand and I'm bringing my mom, my uncle and my aunt with me. What? What? It's such a, it's a huge, huge blessing. Like I'm so thankful. I thank the God. I thank God for just being in this financial standpoint in my life that I can do that, that I can buy my own tickets and buy three other people tickets and not be stressed about the money. Like I'm so, so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity to spend time with my family and be able to experience this because my background, I come from an immigrant background. We were so poor. Like it, my mom came from the village. Like she has her most highest education is high school. But even by the time that she was in high school, she mentally dropped out because she had to take care of my grandparents, her brothers, and she was building a family herself. She didn't know a lick of English. She didn't know a word of English. They came in here with just like 20 USD dollars. We just grew up with such a poor and broke mindset. That's still in me sometimes. It's just my childhood. Like we were, we were in poverty. My parents, both my parents were probably just making 36000 together, raising a family with me and my brother. That That is poverty level. We were just so poor. And I'm so, so glad that I've broken out of that mindset. And now like 20 years later, 20, 30 years later, I'm 30 now. Now, 30 years later, I can somewhat pay back my family for all the hardships that they've went through to take care of me um and but this is nothing like me buying them a trip well it's not even like a drop in what they've provided for me so it's super super cool that I get to bring my mom to Thailand she hasn't been to Asia in 20 years like I have to remind myself that this is also the first time that they're experiencing life as well. I've traveled so much and my mom hasn't really gotten that opportunity to do so because she's just been grinding and hustling her whole life. So I'm happy that I get to share the, the wonderful travel experiences with her. I am very, very nervous though. Um, my mom and I had we had a struggling relationship throughout most of my life. We had it, it mainly stemmed from me, but like we had a very, just not an amicable, re amicable relationship. And it was just, it was tough, you know? I, I could get into my childhood later. I grew up in a single family household. My mom basically raised me and my brother. There was a lot of challenges there. Anyways, only up until my spiritual enlightenment, now I'm realizing once I started my spiritual journey, my relationship with my mom also healed whoa whoa i didn't realize that until i'm talking about it now so maybe i'll do an episode about mother and daughter relationship anyways i'm nervous about going to thailand with my family because my mom is just very angsty her mind is constantly running with what ifs and not the like what if we win a million dollars what if we get bumped into first class it's like what if we miss our flight what if um what if we won't get our seats or what if the plane crashes those type of what ifs constantly like it doesn't stop so i am nervous about you know going on vacation going on vacation people are supposed to relax but if you actually look at it like a lot of people are pretty stressed out because they're always like anticipating something to go wrong like if when you look at airports a lot of customers are super pissed off and just anxious. Probably do have like troubles going on with the flights, but like a lot of times it's just like made up scenarios in their head. So I am nervous about going that with my mom. Um, I think I'm going to have to prep my mom a conversation. Just be like, just learn how to relax. Like whatever happens, know that you're on the best path. If we, we won't, but like if, if we miss our flight, it was meant to be that way. And that's because God has something better planned out for us. So, oh my gosh, that whole spiel, um, that is one of my highlights. Second highlight is we, uh, we reached 2.6 million views in one of our IG videos. Isn't that crazy? It's this sushi video and we reached 2.1 million. I am so, it's just so cool that I could be reaching out to that many people. And I hope that the content provides some kind of joy, some kind, even a smile. I hope it could bring a little bit tiny joy to people's lives and the last highlight is spring is coming i cannot wait for warmer weather it's been 
it's not like freezing freezing we're ready for warm weather like i'm ready to go out with sandals I'm ready to not always put on a jacket. The second, almost the second week of April. Spring happened on March 21st and I'm still wearing my winter jacket. I'm ready for spring. I'm glad warmer weather is here and I want more warm weather. All right, my friends, let's get started on the spiritual journey. I feel really, really good about this episode. I really hope that it's going to connect with anyone listening out there right now, whether you feel like you're going through a shift in your identity or you've never heard of this stuff you never understood it because that was me before and i hope it could provide some kind of insights to you or if you're in your spiritual journey or you went through your spiritual journey i hope that you could relate to this in some way there's something about this episode that i feel like is going to go really well like i really hope that it's going to connect with some of you all my pre-enlightened me me before i truly understood what faith was and trusting the universe pre 27 year old me i was stuck in a matrix i was such a robot my entire life a lot of that stems from childhood which i could get into another episode being a child of immigrant constantly on scarcity mind coming from a really broken home and also a home that has just like most of our problems are financial stuff that that is a whole episode itself but pre-27 year old me i was obsessed with worldly things obsessed with external validations obsessed with getting people to like me obsessed with what other people think about me and if they approve of me or not that was how i justified who i was in this world and how i was as a person based on what someone else thinks i was constantly chasing achievement after achievement after achievement if i did if i didn't have a list of successful things that i could say i've accomplished then i'm a loser that's how i identified myself as i just wanted people to approve of me respect me like me and for the people that didn't which was not a problem which was which never was about me it was more so about how they were in their own world and what they were projecting but like for people who didn't like me i would be constantly chasing their validation when whose life am i living for am i living for them or am i living for me in my 20s my career was constantly getting chasing promotion after promotion salary after salary i needed to get this job title to be respected and then i got i needed to be a manager and then i needed to be a senior manager i needed to be a director i needed all those titles for me to feel self-worth i needed to make six figures if i didn't get it i would find ways like i would jump to another company just to get it even if i hated the company like i i was just constantly chasing for more and more satisfaction my career was definitely a huge motivation for me um i felt like people were people would respect me if i had the dream salary and if i had the dream title i was just constantly chasing for more and more once i got the manager level once i got the salary it was like no i need to be in tech once i got in tech it was like no i need to be working in this specific field and i got it all one thing that like got me to my spiritual evolution was when typically people who typically it's when you're in crisis, that's when you start evolving and you have a huge breakthrough. You don't have to be in crisis, but that's real. It's usually when people are in like a really, really big identity shift or a crisis, like just really not satisfied with themselves. They start questioning things. And that was me for my career because I was just constantly seeking promotion after promotion, just title after title. Every time I got it, it only satisfied me for a little bit. I would get it, and the day that I would get it, I feel so proud of myself. I'd be like, yes, I earned this. I deserve this. Now people are really going to respect me. Now I could say manager on my in my business card or whatever, but it only lasted like two weeks. This is one of the pivotal moments for me. I work in advertising and I worked at an agency for so long that I've been in an agency. I really wanted to go on the client side. Um, so like working in the brand side, I was just constantly thinking about brand side. I was I was constantly interviewing for so many companies and I went through so many hardships through that where I would like, I would get interviews from like top companies like 
Google, TikTok, Apple, and get into the final round. There was just one dream company that I really, really wanted. And I thought I excelled at it. Uh, after my presentation, after my presentation for that interview, everyone gave me a round of applause. People said that that was the best interview they ever had, best PowerPoint deck they've ever seen. The CMO sent me an email directly saying how they're, they were saying like they loved me. They were just saying like, I don't see how you could not fit in. And guess what? I didn't get the role. I didn't get the role. And I remember I was outside of my house, like two blocks away from my house. This was at nighttime. It was dark. I had my hood on and I was just bawling out crying. I was crying in public and just feeling so worthless and disappointed and stupid and just a fa- I felt like a failure because of someone else's rejection, which also probably had nothing to do with me. If they had all these great things to say, it could have just been they were going through a reorg or they didn't have the budget or whatever. But like I made myself feel so shitty because the company didn't want me. That was, I just remember that feeling. I felt so stuck. I felt like I couldn't escape where I was in my current career. That I felt so low, right? Like that was extremely low where I was like, walk I was and this wasn't just one time like I would literally go on super long walks after work and just crying because I I knew I deserved a better I just knew that I wanted to be challenged more in my career the work that I was doing I didn't feel challenged but I felt so stuck I felt like I was going to be stuck at an agency and I couldn't get to where I needed to go almost every night after work I would go through long walks and just cry and I would listen to videos and music about how you just have to keep going it gets better if you're having a bad day listen to this like I would it was a time for me it was a very like I I was just I was very sad. And then I got the job. I got the dream job. I got the dream job, the dream title, the dream salary. Everything that I wanted, I got it. Literally, T for T. And I was so happy. I was jumping up and down, crying and like saying, this is why. This is why I went through all those rejections because of this. I got the dream job and two weeks later, I was like, is that it? I thought, I just thought I would be doing way more magical things. I thought I would be making a bigger impact. I thought I would be doing way more innovative changes, but it it was the same exact day-to-day tasks that I was doing just at a different company. I realized that everything, all these worldly things that I'm chasing, they're just, they give you, they give you temporary peace. Because you're going to want something else afterwards. You're just going to be constantly chasing more and more. It was only until I started learning about the universe and God fully allowing the universe to come into me and hearing it. That is when I found peace. And that type of peace from, you could call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it multiple names because I want this to connect to everyone. And some people might, some people might call it God. Some people might call it the spirit. Some people might call it the universe, your inner source, your inner guide, whatever. They're all the same to me. It's just one, it's a higher power. And it was only until I allowed in, I fully allowed in and accepted the higher power, I started shifting in myself. Here is another example of how robotic I was. Like I wasn't, I wasn't just, everything I was doing was literally to satisfy humans. Like everyone, but everything I was doing was literally to satisfy everyone but myself. I, I found satisfaction in how people viewed me. This is, this is so insane. And, and if you do this, no shade to you. Okay. It just, it didn't work out for me. Back then, every morning, I would listen to the news. Every single morning, I would listen to the daily right when I wake up. That is what I listen to when I brush my teeth, when I'm getting ready. I would listen to the worst things ever about the world because that's what news is. And that's how I fueled my soul. In the morning, I would be listening to like countries getting terrorist attack or Donald Trump. And like, and the reason why I did it was because I wanted, when I talked to people, I wanted, that was what I thought was talking conversation topics to talk about what's going on in the world. Like the most depressing shit. That was how I started conversations with people. I thought it was a way to connect with people and also for people to like see that I'm intelligent. 
it just blows my mind. Like I'm fueling my mind with the worst things and then with the worst things in the in the first 10 minutes of my day, not even like not even being grateful that like, oh, I get to wake up for another day. Like so many adventures are ahead of me. No, I would literally brainwash my mind with the news. And then I wonder why, like throughout the day, all I could ever see is just crimes happening or more bad things happening in the world and just not seeing the good because I started off the day just listening about the bad things in the world. That's how brainwashed I was. And if you listen to the news, again, no shade to you. It's all about what brings you to your higher purpose. Listening to the news in the morning did not bring me to my higher purpose. It just drove me way more anxiety. And I I did not need to start my day off with the news. I kind of want to mointy moi. Should I mointy moi? Let's mointy moi. All right, friends, we have it. We have my jade, my jade pipe that I love so much. Jade is supposed to bring you a lot of luck and abundance. I'm going to moint it. And everyone listening to this podcast right now, whatever the day that the day that you are having right now, it's going to be the most abundant. There's going to be so many random blessings coming to you. And I cannot wait to hear about it. Tell me how your day went, because at once I smoke this moint, Abundance is coming to us. Could I do an AM- ASMR moin? Let's try. This is the crystal. Oh. Oh. What a beauty. I am tempted to take another one, but I'm going to see how I feel. Let's see how I feel in five minutes. Because what I'm going to talk about is very, very special to me. And I want to be open and vulnerable to you and share with you guys. The best way that I can, because this stuff is still a bit confusing to me. I am still learning about spirituality and I feel like it's just going to be a lifelong journey. All right, let's start off with the first thing. How can you be connected to the universe or... How did I start off? I'm not even going to share advice because I cannot teach this. So all I'm going to talk about is my personal experience. How did I get in touch with the universe? How did I get allowing the universe to come in? This, this, this beautiful flower, the za, the ganja, it has what every, once I just started taking this, I feel so much more introspective like I don't I don't know how to describe it I feel at one with the world I'm way more compassionate empathetic I care more about people I just feel like I could feel the spirit closer I I'm way more in tune with my body and also I just feel the spirit around me and I feel protected I feel guided by the universe I feel so so grateful for so many things that I normally do just kind of ignore or go by my day without thinking of just like being grateful for my body grateful for this earth grateful for the planet grateful that like how how so many systems work in this world like how humans breathe out carbon dioxide and plants need that carbon dioxide for them to grow and plants provide oxygen to us so it's a full circle and we need each other just like small things like that that I would usually never ever think so into or like deeply I feel way more grateful and it's because of the za and the za has helped me get in touch with the universe a lot more just being grateful will get you closer to the universe I can't explain to you guys what the universe I I don't know how I could explain it to you guys what the universe is it's a higher power and we all have access to the universe and the universe loves you so 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 much no matter what you're doing the universe will always accept you the the universe will never leave you everything that you're seeking for in this world cannot come close to the love and the peace and the affection that that the universe can provide all right so let's start off with a timeline sort of so i told you guys pre-27 i was just a robot i was an npc i was just constantly i was brainwashed i was just constantly chasing and chasing and chasing, never questioning, like, is this what I really want? 
that was pre-27 me, me being more in tune with myself started in 2021 and so many things has changed since 2021. In 2021, I moved away from my boyfriend's parents' home. I was living in between my parents' home and my boyfriend's parents' home and then in 2021, we got our own apartment in New York City, in my dream city. This building is a manifestation of itself, like where I'm living right now. I literally, man, I really manifested this building. Like I would dream and visualize how the building would look like, what neighborhood, where it was around. It's it's crazy how real manifestation is. And that just shows the power of the universe, that the universe is constantly listening to you. I literally dreamt of a white building close to Trader Joe's and Target close to a train station and that is where and that is my building like it has so I literally like I would I would fantasize about how my dream apartment would look like and I would fantasize me staring outside the window and the view that I would get from my window and I and I got it that's how powerful visualization is so it started in i'm saying this like <laughs> this is my third time saying this it started in 2021 i moved away from I got my own space and having my own space is such a blessing and it really I got I got so in touch with myself because I finally had like quiet I had peace I got to actually hear my thoughts without like hearing so many other people's just worlds I was I got to connect with myself and that was a catalyst of my spiritual journey just having my own space that was in 2021 and that year was me really connecting with myself like I really had the opportunity to just I had my own space I was I was starting to get a taste of freedom and getting in tune with myself and then in 2022 I started listening to I started listening to Joe Dispenza and he's a researcher who studies your mind and the power of your thoughts. This was the first time I learned about your conscious thoughts and your unconscious thoughts, which is kind of wild because it's crazy that it took me 27 years to learn about it. But if you don't know, he said something like 95% of the day, it's our unconscious thoughts that lead to that takes over us and we only use our conscious thoughts 5% of the day. We know that our thoughts drive the way that we feel. Like like me, for example, I was constantly thinking about the news, thinking about the worst things possible, thinking about just like all the crimes, the traumas, all the bad things happening in the world. And that brought me anxiety, that brought me stress. And that was all I was seeing. You know, when you're constantly just hearing about people dying or like people people getting sick or like people getting harmed it really had a toll on my mental health so if your thoughts could get you sick can your thoughts heal you can your thoughts make you better can your thoughts make you the best version of yourself so that's a little bit of what joe dispenza is about and i started listening to him and once i fully understood that like what unconscious and conscious thoughts were can we start thinking our thoughts can we start thinking our thoughts more consciously so we could use our thoughts to become the best version of ourselves and that like blew my mind um and then when you're going th in the beginning of your spiritual journey you're going to start finding mentors like the universe would just once you start understanding and allowing this new world into you the universe will start placing people or resources into your life so you could learn more and take you on to the next level so I started meeting a couple people who understood this type of new world thinking and she's guided me a lot on the power of your thoughts and then I started understanding energy and vibrations and the masculine energy and divine femity so beautiful like i think m more females should start learning about the power of your fe feminine energy and how woman energy is so beautiful and powerful and learning for us to tap more into our feminine energy will just make our lives so much easier i feel like for the past decade we females have been trying to make it work in this masculine world and by doing so is for us to be tapping into our masculine energy and that has just exhausted the female population 2021 and onward i got really deep into i've always been into self-improvement books but i just got i started really 
understanding how your thoughts can affect your entire life. Your thoughts make you into your personality, right? Like if you're just constantly thinking good things, optimistic things, you're an optimistic, happy-go-lucky person, or you try to be, right? Like if you're constantly thinking about negative things or depressive things, like you are, you know, you're just, there's, there's a sense of darkness in you. So I really just started tapping more into my thoughts and filtering out certain thoughts that I want to have like back then I would call myself stupid a lot um I would just not think nice things about myself like if I made a mistake of like accidentally overcooking food or whatever like I would be not nice to myself I would say like oh why are you so stupid like that was such a silly mistake come on Patty you should have known better like instead I and then I switched it. I was like, what if I give myself a lot more grace? What if I talk kindly to myself? Like, I want to talk, I want to say that about someone else. So why am I going to talk about myself like that? Many, many things of just talking nice to myself. Yeah, I started therapy at 27. So at 2021, um, therapy has changed my life. I don't do therapy anymore. And I could talk about that in the later episodes, I think I'm at a point where I'm just over talking about my traumas and my childhood. I don't even want to spend energy talking about my past. That isn't going to bring me to my higher purpose. But yes, therapy, life-changing. I've learned so much in therapy. Um, I've joined a Muay Thai community. Moving your body is so important. And I fell in love with martial arts. It's It all stemmed from fear too. In 2020, when I was constantly listening to the news, what was also infiltrated in my mind was constantly hearing about anti-Asian hate crime because people were so against the Chinese population in 2020 because that's where COVID came from. They had such a fear of anyone who looked Chinese, like even if you were Korean, Japanese, Thai, whatever, you were assume that you were Chinese and people legit in New York, people were getting punched. Asian people were getting punched. Asian people were getting knocked down. Grandmas were getting burned. I feared for my life. And then that got me motivated to learn about self-defense. And I got to join a Muay Thai gym. And then I found friends there. And it's just been, it's such a huge part of my life and such a beautiful blessing. It made me so grateful for my body. Like, wow. This physical shell of mine can protect me in so many ways. I can learn to use it as a weapon. I found amazing people in the gym. Moving my body and learning and exercising is so great already. And then when you make a community out of it, it's incredible, especially finding a community in New York. It's hard sometimes to make friends. And the older you get, it could be hard to to put yourself out there. And I love, love, love the people at my gym. Like I'm just, I'm surrounded by greatness. Um, so I found a Muay Thai community. I started diving into self-help and like self-improvement books. Listen to Joe Dispenza, Abraham Hicks, if you know, you know. Mel Robbins, she has helped me a lot. Learning about just the science of neuroplasticity where you if you just change your thoughts, it rewires your brain. So your thoughts definitely has an impact on your body and your physical health. Example, in your brain, there's this filter called the ventricular active system. And it's literally like a filter, a gateway where it brings in thoughts that it thinks are important. How this works is like, say as if you're shopping for a car now and you want a red car. When you're in the mindset of seeking for, of shopping for a red car, you're going to start seeing more and more red cars now. That's what the ventricular active system is doing. It's literally filtering for what they think is important. I started learning, I started filtering for good positive thoughts. Like I would wake up and do my journal, my five minute journal. And I would say three things that I'm grateful for. So already I'm starting off the day grateful. And then I would write down three things that I would like to accomplish for the day. So I'm filtering for things that are going to get me focused and accomplish with what I want to do. I just started being more grateful. And the more grateful you are, the more blessings that you're going to see you have. And when you tap into that type of mindset, the more the universe will give to you. Now I would just wake up feeling so, so grateful. Like usually when I wake up, I would thank God. I would thank you for blessing me for another day. Thank you for waking up. Thank you for allowing me to wake up. Thank you 
for thank you for giving me the opportunity to experience another day full of your abundance and your blessings and the universe is so incredible here is something that i read in the bible and i feel like it's pretty f fitting to what we're talking about now your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body when your eye is healthy your whole body is filled with light but when your eye is unhealthy your whole body is filled with darkness that's exactly what we're talking about right now. When we start seeing the good, more good will come. When we only see the bad and the negative and the darkness, we're only going to attract that. So I just started shifting my mindset of being more grateful, being more appreciative, just seeing the good in people. And so many good came back to me. Learning the power of your thoughts, therapy, um, Muay Thai community, and again, so many good, so and so many good things started coming from that. Like, I have so much more that has changed my life. Like, but once it's really once you start being grateful for the things that you do have, that's when God starts blessing you with more and more. Another thing that He blessed me with was last year in 2023. I started life coaching. My job gave me my job gave me a program where I could have a life coach for six to nine months. And that was I've learned so much from that. The main takeaway I would take from coaching is I've just learned to celebrate the small things in life. And it's the micro steps that matter. Um, it's the joy. It's the process of being and the journey that brings the happiness it's not the end destination but it's the journey itself and I started growing in my faith more I started I started reading the bible again and that's another blessing from God like God connected me to a church this story is so good I met her through Jesse. She was this super cool girl who like who played basketball with all the boys. And I was like, who is this chick? And she is also heavily um, into faith, um, into Christi Christianity. And, and then her and I started just talking about faith and the spirit. And she got me a Bible. So I started reading the Bible more. The power of prayer is just phenomenal. Like I started praying um with my religious journey uh I was into Christianity when I was like in middle school and then my father passed and I got into like a dark negative loophole I'm like how could there be a god when he would take away our head of the household and like make my family fall apart like this even though my family fell apart way before that I stepped away from god and then in like 2021 2022 i started i think it was the end of 2022 and so last year in 2023 i started reading the bible more and then i started praying more and prayer is just it's a way to get closer to god to the universe like it's just you and him you and the spirit you and the higher being and the spirit knows everything that you're thinking and the spirit knows everything that you need um it's up to you if you want to allow the spirit in if you want to be vulnerable if you want to be honest to the spirit and i just i just started praying and i would see that god answered every single one of my prayers it was like how can I question God after that? It wasn't even like big things like, oh, I want to be a millionaire. It would, I would just pray to God about these little small things that I would struggle with and he would take care of everything. And after that, I would like, I just grew my faith in the Lord. And I was like, there's no way that you're not real. If everything that I come to you about and you fix it, or you guide me, you show, you give me the courage to be a better person, to show me how I can handle this situation, things that I can't control, you take care of. And after more and more prayers, like the first few times I'm like, is this a coincidence? Like, whoa, like, it really got taken care of. I didn't have to worry. I didn't have to stress. And the first few times I was like, I was skeptical, but then you just, every time you pray, just take a note, start, start just being aware. Like, is God, like, did God take care of it for me? Did I hear his spirit? Did I hear his words? And 
it doesn't even have to be like words that you hear mentally. Like you could feel God's spirit through everything. You could hear, you could hear God through the next song that you listen to. You could hear God through people, like the words that are being like shared to you. You could hear God through just the wind, the feeling. Like I just started, God started answering all my prayers and there was no way that I could go back. There's no, why would I? If I have a higher being that is going to guide me and give me everything that I need, like, why would I want to live a life that isn't that? Fully allowing myself to receive and receive all the abundance of God, receive all the gifts that he provides in this world and that that has changed me. All right, we're going to have to wrap it up because I've been talking for a minute. How has God, how has allowing the universe changed my life? I... I'm at the best version of myself and I cannot wait. I mean, I can't wait, but like I'm going to continue evolving to be a better human. And I'm so excited for that journey. I just, there's no competition anymore. I don't feel like I lack anything. I have complete trust to the universe. I don't seek any of these external validations. I don't care about what people think about me. I literally don't because mortals say about me means nothing. When I have the higher being, like I know who God says I am. God says that I am his child. God says that I am a miracle. I am his miraculous gift. If I know who I am and I am a child of God, like I belong to God, then like what someone calls me out, what someone thinks about me is not my problem. It's their problem. The only person that I care about is being accepted for is by God. And I know that God accepts me no matter what. So like all I have to do is just continuing to continue, be the better person, be a, follow my higher purpose. And that just provides me so much peace. Like this type of peace that I have compares to nothing. I've got every, like all of these great things that I have in my life, my dream apartment, so munchy, you guys listening to right now, these are all just extras. These are all just the fruits that I get from connecting to God. Like my life has changed since I let God in and he has just given me abundantly and more like all of these. I just, the relationship that I have with God, this peace that I have is the most important. Everything else are just all gifts, extra gifts that he provides to me. And it is such a blessing and I'm so so grateful I I had it I I had it you know like I constantly chased it I I seeked external value I seeked identity and approval and praises from other people and it just it never satisfied it never satisfied long enough where I could feel fully confident and fully confident in myself okay let me talk about my spirituality really quickly I wouldn't consider myself a religious person I don't consider myself catholic or christian or christian like there are certain things in the bible that I don't agree with I don't think that the bible is the be all and end all I think that God teaches us and connects with us in so many different ways. And the Bible is not the only way. That is a way that I do connect with God. And there's a lot of great scriptures in the Bible. This is one of my most favorite verse. Mark eleven twenty four. I tell you, you could pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Words like that just gives me so much confidence in God. And I am just so grateful yeah that is how i change like there's really no competition i i don't compete with anyone at all now like i know that this is my lane no one can compete with me because you're not in my lane and i can't compete with you because you god made a path for you and only for you i can't get in your path because that wasn't meant for me so once i accepted that we're all in our own journeys and our own time paths in our own lanes there's there's no competition like i want you to win just as badly like I want to win like you winning doesn't mean that I lose and like that's another type of peace that God has provided and imagine living a life like that where there's no competition at all everyone is winning because I'm just out here spreading the great news of the Lord and I want everyone to get this type of peace that I have and that's why I love so much you so much because every time I take an edible every time I eat so much I just feel closer to God I feel more at peace I'm way more open to allowing to the universe to speak to me I feel so good I, I feel so content in life like I I feel the love that the spirit gives to me and 
that that's why like I love my purpose I love accomplishing my purpose through so much like I really really hope that this type of peace this type of happiness this type of contentment that I fate that I go through I hope that I could share it with other people and, and I hope that so much she can provide them the comfort that it gives me Whew, that was a good episode right I feel good I feel good I feel that the spirit is with me I feel that the spirit is with us thank you so so much for listening to this episode I love you all so much and I cannot wait tell me what was the three highlights and tell me what blessings came to you guys today love you Thank you.